to be talking uh, a little bit about exploring UDL or Universal Design for Learning. I'd like to start off sharing a little bit about where this interest came from. So some of you may know this about me, but my educational journey began as a special educator. I didn't really go um, into the field as deeply as I did in ELT. So actually, but my love of, of education and of learning shifted and I, and I went into the ELT field. But this initial step really has guided me in terms of what I feel um, the classroom should look like. And some of those principles that are from special education are still there. So in 2022, we were starting a best practices course in Guatemala City. So this was our initial activity. We were all upstairs. We were doing an activity where everyone needed to do a gesture and people were calling out names based on those gestures. And we noticed that one of our students or one of our participants, I'm sorry, was really not able to see everybody else. And this was a surprise because this was not something that we had expected. It wasn't something that had been um, shared with us previously. So we were working with a team of three uh, trainers at this moment. And it was like, hmm, I wonder what's going on. So it, it really did bring our attention to him specifically, right? So then we noticed that this participant, so he's here, his, this participant was actually, um, he had low vision. Yeah, so he had very low vision and was unable to see his peers upstairs. So this was something that, well, we said, okay, well, we're going to have to adjust. This wasn't something that was expected. It wasn't something that we knew. So we started making some adjustments. So the seating arrangement in the room, for example, um, a lot of our texts on the certificate course are actually very lengthy. And it was really challenging for him to be able to read all of these uh, texts. So we recorded audios for him and we made sure that there were discussions that took place afterwards similar to this, where he would be able to share some of those ideas. We made sure that there was high contrast materials, so the visuals that we created for him. Uh, we made sure that there was an opportunity to verbalize what we were sharing on the screen. We made sure to discuss his record book with him and completed it along with him. Yeah, so then what we were trying to do, um, it was also another uh, element was making sure that everything was digitalized. As you can see, he had a tablet where he was able to make things larger for himself to be able to, to stay on track and to be able to read the, the resources that were there. So we were considering his particular needs and we made accommodations as we could. So this was something that we did on a daily basis with the team. And this was, I, I, I'm not gonna lie, it was a challenge because as you probably know, um, working on a certificate course or in a best practices course is generally quite intensive. Uh, they're, they're long hours, so there's a lot going on, but this really did bring me to a puzzle. Yeah, so after we finished this course, I was thinking, what about the diversity of all my, my students, of all my, my participants? We were thinking about him specifically on this course, but it did lead me down a path to think about diversity in a broader sense. And that's where I, I landed on universal design for learning. So this was something that I had actually already explored a little bit before, but it really did give me a context and a need for it. So in terms of universal design, as some of you may know, it's a concept that came from architecture. So when we're thinking about a universal design, you're thinking about spaces that are created for everyone. Yeah, so you're creating spaces that, for example, it, this benefits not only someone in a wheelchair, but it also benefits a mother with a stroller, for example. Or it benefits someone with low vision, it benefits someone on a bike. So there are different people who are being benefited from the universal design. So they've taken these same principles and they've applied them to learning. Yeah, so, and a, a lot of it, it actually relates to some of the principles that you saw Josh talking about. So when we think of universal design for learning, it's an approach to teaching and learning that offers flexibility. So that's what we're trying to integrate into our, our classrooms and into our training spaces so that students have equitable opportunities to succeed. And it's not about finding one approach that suits all learners, but about building inclusive learning environments. So the, the, the shift is a little different. If you noticed from the example that I gave previously with my, with my participant, we were thinking about the individual. 
Yeah, so we were thinking about this student in particular, and we were adjusting for him. That's what we would call differentiated instruction. But universal design for learning thinks about the environment. What are the barriers for success in my environment? And this is something that I just like us to explore a little bit in terms of in a broader, and then we'll go back to the course. So in, in terms of differentiated instruction and universal design for learning, they are very similar in some senses. So you're thinking about student needs, as you saw in the example that I, that I provided. We're thinking about standards, expectations, and contents, because these are the same for all learners. You're thinking about planning that focuses on strengths and challenges. You're thinking about a variety of tools that can be explored. And you're scaffolding and supporting, which is essential for learning in general, yes? But there are some key differences that I'd, li I'd like us to notice. So in terms of the universal design for learning, as we were saying, you're thinking about the environment. Yeah, so you're thinking about the curriculum, the assessment, the space that you're in, and you're thinking about what are the barriers there. Whereas when um, we're using differentiated instruction, often we're thinking about the student within that environment. You're focusing on individual students, and that would mean potentially making different accommodations for each student. Yes. So then in terms of the lesson planning, I think that this is something that's really crucial the proactive versus the reactive approach. So in terms of universal design for learning, you're thinking about anticipating student needs proactively versus with what we were doing in that example is we were responding. Yes, yeah? so we were reacting to what our participant needed in this case. And you're often thinking about individual student needs. So because of this, UDL happens before the lesson versus differentiated instruction, which happens after the lesson. And you're thinking about in UDL, the flexibility from the start so that students have the option of self-differentiation instead of the teacher being the one that differentiates. Yeah, so often with differentiated, differentiated instruction, you're the one making the choices, yes? So you're saying, this is what you're going to do versus with UDL, you provide options so that students are able to do that for themselves and they choose a path that helps them. And then finally, um, the objective of UDL is to remove barriers as we were seeing and helping students or participants become expert learners. Whereas with um, a differentiated instruction, often we're thinking about creating a responsive learning environment for individuals and for a group of students. So here, there's obviously both of them benefit students and create a more inclusive environment. But this made me think of how can we consider this on the certificate course or on our best practices courses. So when I started thinking about UDL, one of the lenses that I was thinking about is how might UDL enhance the learning module? Because I think that more and more we're seeing that the learners that are in our classrooms are more and more diverse. So it's something that we need to respond to, right? And our participants need to go into classrooms where there will be diversity. But the other lens that I'm also thinking about, and it's just a puzzle that is on my mind, is how might we make our courses more inclusive and accessible. So this is something that I think is, is just, it's, it's food for thought, right? So it's something that I'm thinking about currently, it's where I am in terms of thinking about our course and how we might be able to do that. So UDL is based on three main principles. And um, I think that these principles can be integrated into the course. I'm gonna show you an example of how I, I see that uh, potentially happening. But the first principle has to do with multiple means of representation. So this means the materials that we provide or the resources that our participants have access to should be um, multimodal, as we were seeing with, um, with Matt and, and his presentation uh, previously. So this is the what of the learning. Then we have multiple means of engagement, which is the why of the learning. So making sure that there are different ways of engaging with those resources. Then we have multiple means of action and expression, which is the how, yes? Yeah? So how our participants show us that they have learned. And one way that I see this happening, here I have an example. So I think a lot of us have a, offered this as an assignment. So after the first week, our participants are asked to write an essay. Yes, yeah, so they write an essay where they present 
their key ideas or the their takeaways from this first day a week. And it's generally a 500 to a 700 word essay that helps um, them organize these initial thoughts. And then often we have these four core questions. Yeah, so we have, what did you learn about yourself as a learner? What did you learn about others a, in terms of learning, the environment, and what are some action plans that you have for the future? Yeah, so then typically, because, and well, I don't know, but often this is something that we assign and our participants have maybe a few days to be able to work on this. So one way of applying UDL to our to assignments like these is, for example, having our participants, obviously the first option, having them write an essay. Yes, so they write an essay. Some participants benefit from it. I'm one of these people who really likes writing. So uh, I would probably choose this option. And we can start with discussion uh, of the topic or a graphic organizer. Then the second option might be creating a multimedia essay or a presenting uh, a presentation, I'm sorry, incorporating visual and auditory elements. And then last week, we might provide structured uh, an opportunity for a, a structured podcast or an audio essay. So if you see here, we're from the get go, from the get go, we're building in options, flexibility. Not everybody will do exactly the same thing, but they will reflect the same ideas. Yes. So obviously this leads to us thinking about, for example, rubrics that we might be able to develop so that everybody has the same quality of assignment. Yes, so this is just an option that we could do. So I just like you to think about for a minute, what are some of the barriers that you've noticed, not with our students, but with our course and where we might be able to provide more flexibility and more options. So I think that that's kind of the, the, the challenge that, that I think I'm leaving you with in terms of, of how we might be able to integrate UDL into our course. So some of the final thoughts that I have is, I think that one of the, the other ideas that I've been wrestling with is, I think that exploring UDL and modeling it throughout our course helps us not only talk the talk, but also walk the walk, right? So we, we talk a lot about <laughs> certain things that benefit learning, but then are we actually modeling it and demonstrating it in the course? And also, I think that this is a framework that's not intended to be like an all or nothing. So it's something that we can take step, step by step. So we think about the assignments, how we can provide more options and flexibility. Then we think about, for example, the resources like the readings that often are very lengthy and not for everyone. And how do we provide flexibility? And then finally, I think that this community is a wonderful place for us to continue these conversations. So it's not something that is intended to be done alone. But I think that it's something that this community can, can think about further and explore how UDL might a, be integrated into our course a little bit further. So I'd like to share some material that I think might be helpful for, for you if you'd like to explore this further. And I'm going to put that in the chat. So CAST is actually an organization that develops the guidelines. They have a lot of different resources in case you'd like to do more reading. And to end my, my little presentation today, I'd like you to think about, so what are one or two things that you're thinking about? So something that you'd like to remember or something that you'd like to explore further. So go ahead and take a minute to do that. 